Hey, but I am. Hey, everybody. Last Outrider here, bringing you a Tyranid video. Yes, it's surprising. I haven't done Tyranids in months, but we're going to talk about one unit that I that I left out since I began doing fluff. The Tyrannocyte. I actually have used this guy in proxy, uh, um, but he's quite nice. Um, let me tell you. Let me tell. Let me get to the fluff on him first. When a Tyranid hive ship launches a pre-digestive assault, its creatures are transported to the planet's surface by a tentacled ovoid, which I think looks like a giant testicle, known as tyrannocytes. Though each spore appears to be little more than a giant veiny sac, testicle, <clears throat> It is, in fact, a creature unto itself, and one possessed of its own fierce appetites. Spat from the quivering orifices of the hive ships in low orbit, the Tyrannocyte thunders through the tortured skies to slam into the surface of its target world. This, this impact will cause its gravid belly to split, disgorging the tyranids inside in a spray of grisly fluids. Once its passengers have been delivered, the tyrannocyte fills with gaseous emissions and floats eerily into the air. There, it begins to obey its own murderous instincts. The bioweapons that fringe its crown, spitting death as its barbed tendrils quest for prey. Nice stuff. Now, this is, the, this is actually available in a PDF for free online, so I can tell you it's only 75 points. Just 75 points. And it has a weapon skill of 2, a ballistic skill of 2, Strength of five, that's extremely important. Uh, toughness of five, and a mind numbing wounds of six. Initiative of three, attacks of three, leadership eight, and also a very satisfactory saving throw of four plus. It is a monstrous creature, obviously, but then it comes, that means those three attacks are power attacks. Strength 5, power attacks. And it's a unit composition of 1. Weapons and biomorphs. It comes with 5 death spitters, but don't worry, because you will be dropping those at your first opportunity. It comes with several special rules. Deep Strike, Fearless, nice, uh, Instinctive Fire, See opposite. What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, drifting death. This is a nice one. The Tyrannocyte cannot run or charge. They can consolidate, but may not make a sweeping advance. Basically, giant spore mine. Uh, and this is the one I like, though. Transport spore. A Tyrannocyte does not use up a slot on your force organization chart. Tattoo that little statement on your head. It does not use up a spot on your force organization chart. So you can use this with any formations. It's a monstrous creature that doesn't use up any spot. On, it's, a, it's insane. That means you can take as many of these as you want. You can, for 750 points, you can sit down and take 10, 10 Tyrannocytes. <laughs> yes, it's true. Um, let's see what else. It can carry a single unit with the Tyranids faction. Really? Oh, wow, I guess I'm not dropping orcs. And has a transport capacity of 20. Monstrous creatures count as 20 models for the transport capacity. So, yes, that means it can. you can drop a Malwok. I'm going to go into that later. 
because I have. You can drop a mall walk with this guy. It, it, it's uh, well, I used a little trick where I dropped actually a lictor and then you did, but never mind, never mind, never mind. Let's move on. It can carry one monstrous creature. And uh, you declare, this is another very important rule, which many players overlook, declare which unit is being carried during the deployment phase of the game. Okay? So it's not like dedicated transports and stuff like that. You can swap this out and change it out every single, not before the game, not when people are looking at each other's army lists, but during deployment. So if somebody asks you which unit is in that, you just have to say, ha, 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 whichever one I want, guy, I'll let you know during deployment. So if I go second, they deploy first, and I choose who deploys at that moment. And then, since, as I understand it, and this is a little tricky, you might get arguments with it, but if you choose it during deployment, then the order of deployment determines when you decide what goes in. So that means if you're doing your fast attack first or whatever like that, or even scouts, I don't know. It doesn't really clarify. You choose it then. You decide at that time when those units would normally deploy whether it would be in a Tyrannocyte or not. You do not have to declare any of this beforehand, which gives a huge tactical advantage when using these things. So make sure to do it. I've had the arguments, trust me. Make sure to do it. <laughs> a Tyrannocyte always enters play using the Deep Strike rules. If, when, a Tyrannocyte Deep Strikes, it scatters on top of impassable terrain, or another model, friend or foe, Reduce the scatter distance by the minimum required to avoid the obstacle. Now, I ha this means feel free to drop it in enemy territory or next to impassable terrain. In fact, impassable terrain is nice, especially if you, if you don't want to get surrounded because then, never mind, you get the idea. But what it also is used for is if you drop it on top of your own units, maybe you want a, 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 it's turn two or something like that, and you want instant fire support base, drop it on right on top of one of your units. And then if you've got a blob, like most Tyranid, you know, broods, you select the closest edge but you can also do that simply by saying you know where do you want to drop it put it close to the closest edge there already but you understand what i'm saying use that rule to position it the way you want me most of the time if you've watched my videos i use lictors so i use pheromone trail i don't really deviate anyway it's very useful for that once again once a tyrannocyte deep strikes a unit carried by it must disembark. Place the unit such that every model is wholly within six inches of the Tyrannocyte. And none are within one inch of an enemy or impassable terrain. Uh, 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 listen to that. Enemy. This is important because I talked about you can drop it on top of your friendlies. This says it can't be within one inch of an enemy. Or impassable terrain. Any model that cannot be placed is removed as a casual, uh, a casualty, obviously. A unit cannot move or charge in the same turn it disembarks. Unless, of course, you're having, using fun things like, I think it's Catalyst. Yeah, 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 Catalyst. Uh, but it can, it can shoot or run. No unit can embark inside a Tyrannocyte for the rest of the game. There's also fun things to do with this with your Venomthropes and their gaseous emissions. And uh, who else? Who else? Who else is the other fun guy I had with it? 
there's another one. Oh, I'll probably remember it as I keep doing it, the video. But it doesn't matter because in the end, I don't put anything in these guys. And I will explain why in a second. Options. You may replace all five, not one, but all five of the death spitters with one of the following. Five barbed stranglers for 25 points or five venom cannons. Five freaking venom cannons for 25 points. That means one venom cannon for five points. Maybe they do that because of the weapon skill too, but it's five. Here's the cool thing. Oh, it was, um, it was the, um, Zoanthropes. Zoanthropes. You can't move and shoot or anything like that, but psychic attacks. Look at look look over the hive mind psychic attacks. Find the ones that don't say they're shooting or things like that. I think it's a witch fires or things or or whatever. If they're not a shooting, then it can. Uh, if you've got the tyrant in it, move and use a psychic power or fun stuff like that. Or shoot and use a psychic power. But anyways. It's your strategies. Look carefully at the rules and how it applies and how you can fit through that, especially with the Catalyst one. But, as I've said, I've tried lots of crazy tactics with this thing, and in the end, this is my favorite one. Feel free to copy it as much as you like. Buy the Starport. Now, if, if you can see where I'm going here, you're going to see how deadly this becomes. The starport, you then drop it onto the starport without deviation, so he basically lands on it. The starport can be placed anywhere on the freaking table, pretty much, and feel free to do it. It doesn't even matter if the thing gets overrun by enemy troops because, hey, you're about to drop a monstrous creature on it with three attacks. Three power attacks, strength five power attacks. So whatever is on top of it is not going to be happy. Raise the shield of the starport and then just leave it alone. Put those two things. If you can't do a starport, get an Aegis, an Aegis wall. Throw a wall down there. Somehow, somehow where you will be able to drop this around there so that it's shooting through the wall. Personally, I use the Fortress of Redemption, but don't worry about that. Uh, the starport, drop it on top. Raise the shield. You now have a monstrous toughness five creature with six wounds, a saving throw of four, and now an invulnerable save. Yes, an invulnerable save. This thing becomes a damage magnet. I don't put anything inside of it. I don't have to. The thing costs 100 points plus the cost of a starport. You're talking about for less than 200 points, this is going to be the strongest thing on your army list. And if the enemy, if your other player actually focuses his entire army on taking this thing out, which I have encountered many times, they get nothing for it. It's a transport. It's not... It, it, it's great. It's really great. It's really great. Just use it. Keep it simple. I mean, for example, like I said, you don't have to choose deployment or what it's carrying until the deployment phase. So if you get into a scenario where it would be useful to drop a unit of somebody on the other side, then just change your mind. Okay? and put a unit in it. Use that versatility. That's what a Tyranids are about. Adaptability. Adapt your tactics to the situation. But for my default mode, I just drop this guy on top of a starport with five freaking Venom Cannons. <laughs> uh, and six wounds and toughness five, which makes the Venom Cannons what? That makes them strength seven, I believe. It's th yeah. It's insane. It's insane. The other player, especially when I use my lictors, which are infiltrating, okay, and my gene stealer uh, formations, you know, the, uh, the city, the city formation, which allows them to start on any urban terrain, and then there's the, uh, the forest formation, which allows them to infiltrate into any forest terrain. That allows the entire army now to infiltrate and this guy and if you don't want it then you can just load them into this guy because he doesn't take a spot on the force organization chart remember it's crazy 
but seriously, you will drive your opponents into... Uh, let's just say that the people that I've played against have called this the cheesiest thing they have ever seen in 40k history. And I'm like, I didn't make it! Put it on top of a starport. Five Venom Cannons a turn. Let them try shooting it. Or let them ignore it. It's better than even the Necron Monolith in terms of sucking up damage. It is incredible. Try it out. Let me know how it works. Until next time. Bye.